Welcome to the Ricardo Del California Show. I'm happy to say we are in Season 3, Episode 1. I am here today with none other than Maddie Mackey, who runs a business called Media on the Rise. Maddie, tell us a little bit, what is Media on the Rise? Thank you so much for having me. You're so, welcome. <laughs> yeah, so Media on the Rise is a media agency based here in the San Diego area, and we support businesses, everything from the front end, the aesthetics, the social media, the marketing, and lead generation, all the way to the back end, the communications, the funnel systems, the newsletters, the marketing campaign, and throughout. Um, so we do consulting all the way to full management. Wow. Okay. So this goes just beyond advertisement. Way beyond advertisement. I mean, we handhold you and help you create everything from the videos, the photography, the images, the content, whether it's on a DSLR camera, on an iPhone. Um, we really kind of show you the ways of having high quality audio and really communicating your message to your audience to convert your followers to clients. Wow. And so, and this is really interesting. So really you help people express their passion and their mission and put them on the best foot forward in order to promote their business. Absolutely. A lot of what I end up doing is helping people through the blockages that come up in entrepreneurship, the fears, the fear of being seen, the imposter syndromes, you know, the wow. hard. So there's a lot of like coaching that ends up having to happen to get people to break past their limiting beliefs and take that next step forward so that they can reach their next level self. And which is incredible because a lot of times with an advertisement agency, you're not getting that. They're going to do the photography. They're going to go help. Them. When you get on your webpage, try to get you, you know, more exposure, if you will, coaching with the, the imposter syndrome, which is pretty darn amazing. That is a concierge service that I've never heard about. And again, today, ladies and gentlemen, this episode is about the world of advertisement and Maddie is taking it to the le next level. This is incredible. Really coaching people, encouraging you, and, and helping, inspiring you along the way and seeing if there's any barriers or self-doubt because we all struggle with self-doubt. And one of the things that I always want to encourage people who watch the show is whatever you have a passion for, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. If you want to do something, you want a career, you have a passion, you have an art, something, it is so incredible to just to embrace it and see the rewards. But It's a step-by-step -step process. Interestingly enough, so this show is about the world of advertising. Maddie, and I'm going to call her Mad Maddie because one of my favorite shows on television was for, with John Hamm uh, and Christina Hendricks called Mad Men. And these was an era. In, in history where advertising had kind of a panache to it and it was its own style and it it was its own world and it was a very highly rated show on television. Now, so that's how I came up with Mad Maddie because you are mad for advertisement, which is great. Now, interesting thing, as we were talking and we've, I met you through a couple events that I happened to be present at and they were fantastic, is that Maddie has a degree from Sonoma State in geology with a minor in paleontology. How did we go from this Indiana Jones drive, if you will, of, of the world of archaeology or geology and paleontology, it's all in the mix, right, into advertisement? How did that even occur? So great question. Um, so I'm in college, right? I was experimenting and dabbling with all sorts of classes. Honestly, a lot of you probably know about the GE pattern. You know, when you go to a university, you have to like mark off all the boxes in the GE columns. I didn't even get that paper freshman year. I don't know what happened. It just nobody explained that part to me. So I would just thought we were supposed to be sampling classes and just taking random things to see what you wanted to do. Right. So I am just, I'm in like, black and white photography, you know, developing my own film. I'm in some geology classes, astronomy. I'm like doing early childhood development, teaching, you know, I'm in all these fields. I'm an intro to business, you know, like just kind of like, oh, this it's is the so of education at that point. Yeah. I mean, I had no idea. A lot of other people were like marking classes off, like on a plan. Hence why I was there for an, another extra additional year. Yeah. But point being is I got all this opportunity to experiment. And so then it, when it became clear to me that there was a GE pattern I'm actually supposed to be following with an end goal in mind, I realized I needed to figure that out. So I also realized I didn't like the sitting in school all day, like 
I had already very much committed myself to entrepreneurship from an early age. And I, I was like, I knew I wasn't going to go and like climb a corporate ladder in that way. If anything, I was going to kind of do it in my own way. So, but my mom and I kind of had this agreement and they were paying my rent and I had to be in college in order for them to pay my rent. So here I am with a geology degree. It was a very fun major. The people were incredible. I loved the earth and learning everything about it was just taught me so much about how people are. We're very much like the earth and the cycles, like how the earth goes through its own cycles. And I've learned a lot of that information, very science-based information. I've been able to apply to marketing and kind of the competitive industry that that is. No, absolutely. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an exciting thing. So one of the things that was interesting and, and we were talking is when you are a kid, you learn some of these basic sales skills, how to work with people, how to try to promote a pro product in Girl Scouts because you were selling Girl Scout cookies. Yes. I always say my business really began back at the lemonade stands and the Girl Scout cookie days. I was a Girl Scout for many, many years, and I still am involved with their events and support them here in the San Diego area. And I think it's an incredible organization because it's supporting girls from a very young age, empowering them with skills to really understand who they are and help feel confident selling you know, the cookies and knowing yeah. that there are goals, you know, you can win a bike, you can win an easy bake oven, you can win a new doll, a new toy, like at whatever age level you're at, you kind of pick your goal and find out how many boxes you need to sell. So there's a very analytical mindset that we were getting from an early age from some of these programs that I think, you know, some people just got their bike and left. I, on the other hand, was like, how do I get more bikes and then sell these bikes for more? And then like, you know, I was like really thinking like in the bigger picture sense. And I've kind of always had that mindset when I've been working. Yeah. I think one of the things that is really interesting is with the Girl Scouts, it's, it's really setting you up to be a mature young lady and being able to face the world, come knocking on the doors. And when they knock on my doors, I, 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 I close the blinds because I, don't I'm, I, I every time I eat Girl Scout cookies, I gain weight. Yeah, those yeah. capillons are killing me, so that's why I stopped eating them. Right? I um, only eat them at other people's houses. That's the right. Thin mints. They're my favorite. The thin mints. Yeah, yeah, and it's really interesting. I, I really, I like the tagalongs. And one of my coworkers at a previous uh, job had had you know she she really tried to bribe me. She said, "Look at a picture of my kids." I'm like, "Fine," but I ate only ate one a day, and it took me like basically a month because I was really disciplined in having one. Um, okay, so yeah, I, I'm working on it here. So here we are. We're in college, and then there's another step that we talked about because eventually you opened up, and this was quite incredible uh, because you're really giving back in this job, and you became a yoga instructor, and not just any yoga instructor. You worked with boys that were coming out of juvenile hall to do some trauma work, but also to help them develop some coping skills. How did we yes. go do this? I mean, we're we're you know, we're, we're dealing with paleontology now. We're in yoga. You had a yeah. business team. Then. How did this come about? So in high school, my dad had shown me core power yoga. And we did those really hot, intense classes. And he did it to help me through, like, big emotions and anger and have a place to process. So I had had this, like, little programming that yoga was this, like, place you go to process Very stuff. Grounding. Very grounding. Very good. Yeah. And so there came this kind of situation that popped up. I had actually gone through um, one of like the major life traumatic events that I've been through in my life. And I was really at a pivotal point in the road where I was like, going to be going down like a really dark, you know, negative path, or like I had the choice to turn things around and like, move up, you know, like I was at my rock bottom to say the least, you know, at that period of my life. So I was signed up for this yoga teacher training. I did the training. I, if you've ever gone to yoga class or hung out with yoga yeah. people, they're kind of like a, an amazing cult. You know, once you're like in with them, it's like you're drinking celery juice. You're like doing all these things. Yeah, you're doing a all whole that other world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're wearing like shamany scarves. You know, it's like, it's right. such, it's a whole nother world versus like the corporate, like CEO world, you know? <laughs> it's very different. I, I, I think one of my favorite things, and this is an exaggeration of yoga, but have you ever seen the movie Couples Retreat? No. Okay. Well, there's this one scene where Vince Vaughn and Jason Bateman and their wives, Kristen Bell, and all that, they go to yoga. And they, this yoga instructor is very 
touchy feely type of guy, and he would always slap people on the butt and be like encouragement and it, it these ridiculous yoga moves. And so I, every time I think of yoga, I do think of a couples retreat. <laughs> but it is a way. I remember years ago when my father was about to pass, and I went to this twenty four hour all level yoga class for about every Monday for six weeks. And I'll tell you, because my mind's always going. I'm a very, very creative man. And I'm like, I just need to clear my head because my dad's, you know, at this end stage. And I'd walked out of those yoga sessions and my head was like, I'm not thinking about nothing. And, and that's great. I just want to clear my head. So it's a really kind of like cleansing, even just mentally, just to kind of reach some sense of equilibrium. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And that was where I found the passion with it. Like yoga was just the kind of beginning, like the root foundation. And with all due respect, like yoga is the root foundation, like the body postures, the breath, you know, the, the way you hold yourself, the different yamas and niyamas of yoga and the practice and the Hindu practices of like what the core teachings are. Like mm -hmm. I took that stuff like religiously and to heart, like I really changed who I really was as a person after learning all of that. And I had been, you know, involved with some of the wrong people in the wrong places at the wrong times before sure. that. And it was pretty incredible, like switching to this other side of the community and seeing like all the light of these people and that loved me for who I was and didn't judge me for having like emotions or going through shit. Like it was really yeah. powerful. So from that point, I got a job working in a rehab center where boys were coming out of juvenile hall. And for a new yoga teacher, you know, you can expect to be paid like $15 an hour. Like it's so bad in the industry sometimes, like really yeah. bad. But in this case, I'm getting paid like upwards of like 300 plus an hour, you know, to work with these boys, taking my experience of a somewhat troubled past and coming in and being able to be pretty close in age with these boys. They were 12 to 17 years old. Um, and I wasn't much older at the time. I was early college days. I was like 22 or 21. So I'm working with them and I'm doing these rehabilitation exercises through yoga. That first, the the location said, don't do any um, of that healing Buddha stuff. They told me to cut back on that stuff. And so I, you know, respectively just did yoga and kept it more like nervous system and breath work. But then like a few months passed by and they were like, can you actually start doing that stuff again? So then I started bringing my sound bowls back, started bringing in my teachings about, you know, different ways people have calmed themselves out through history, different sure. ways people have tapped into their bodies. And these boys got so much out of it. I got so much from them too. It was so beautiful. And they taught me so much about just how the world works and how no matter who you are or what your background is, like we do, we can all soften. And that was a lesson I think I really needed at that time and what this whole yoga world taught me. And so I went on to lead trauma informed trainings and it started with more for yoga instructors, massage therapists and workers in the wellness industry, just teaching about what trauma informed was certifying them in trauma informed care and letting people know, you know, there's a way to approach someone that is going to be better than other ways if they have experienced trauma and what those things are. And that was kind of the, like the peak of that career was leading those trainings and being in the world. I taught yoga at festivals like lightning in a bottle and for the do lab. And it was really fun to reach those like career goals, if you will. And, and then I got pregnant <laughs> with my daughter. <laughs> there, there we go. Uh, she's two, right? Three, she, three and a half now. That's fantastic. So, you know, it's all, I find our lives, in this progression, we're as we're kind of it's a tapestry that we create, right? We're creating a life, and I think the more that we kind of learn and, and things that we try, it becomes a very colorful tapestry. Mm -hmm. All leads, all these different career paths, all these different classes we take, experiences we go, leads us to sometimes, hopefully, that when we get to that ideal career or or we're get, we're working on finding it, creating this great career where we take all those skill sets, all that knowledge, all those experiences. And I think that's what you really did with Media on the Rise. Question for you. So I know that Media on the Rise has been around for 2021. Concierge surges, right? Even even mm -hmm. a little bit of a, a Tony Robbins in you as you're encouraging your people, which is great. Love to have mm -hmm. Tony on my show. And anyways, moving along, how do we get the word or the phrase Media on the Rise? 
So, good question. Coming up with my business names has always been such a long and painful process. Mm. I don't do anything. I just let the download come to me, but it's annoying because I usually have the whole idea and then I just have to wait for like months on end until I'm somewhere, some place and the name sure. comes through. Yeah. So, Media on the Rise, my former business with the trauma recovery was called Rise Above Yoga. So I took the rise. I knew I wanted to bring like a little piece of it with me because that conscious root of everything will always be with me. And so uh, that's, I was thinking media, rise, rise media. Like we had all these things we were talking and then we have to look at what's available, obviously in reality. And so then media on the rise was available. And so we just went with it. It worked out really well. And then I have another business, which I don't even think I've told you about, but it's called Media on the Rise Publishing. And it's a publishing company that we're in the early stages. Me and two other owners have developed. Publishing. And what would that entail? Publishing what? Books. Well, that, okay. I like your style. <laughs> it's incredible. You know, I, there's a key word. And when key words come on my show, or I, I throw them on the screen. When you said you were waiting for the download, the culmination of the thoughts. You know, I find that sometimes when I go on my early morning walks, and I've been doing these early morning walks, I missed one day in three years since the corona era where I just needed to clear my head in the morning. And that's how the show develops. I I said, I've always wanted a talk show. Let's do it. The download comes, the culmination of thoughts. And you help people to download what they're trying to do so they are able to do it. And I think that that is an incredible thing. I think one of the things I mean, we're going to look at today is advertising. You offer a, a tremendous amount of services to people. What kind of clients have you catered to and what kind of clients are you looking for? So, good question. We... I'd say we've catered to so many vast different types of clients. I'd say over the course of things, these clients have a very conscious mindset. So that doesn't mean they have to be in the wellness industry. We've worked with lawyers, construction companies, you know, we've worked with coaches, we've worked with acupuncturists, we've worked with authors, you know, across the board, I could go on all day, a lot of events, big sustainable companies, we've worked with electric vehicle companies. So as you can see, there's so many different industries that we can support. But what we really believe in is that we need to be working with the business owner, the manager, or whoever's going to be our point of contact, someone who's heavily invested in the business, you know, someone who really has passion for it, they love what they do, you know, we don't really match well with people who just want that, like, agency plug and play, like repetitive service, like we're really about evolution. So we want to work with people who are hungry, who want to grow, who have that ability ability and desire to expand, even if they don't know how they're going to do it, to just know that they can trust they're going to have the support and it'll come through. And that's what, you know, part of our job is to support you through those parts as well. Right. So, I mean, we've got, I mean, you ran the gamut of all types of industries and interest and passion. So like, it's a one-stop shop for, I mean, you could be a yoga teacher, you could be an author, you could be, my goodness, I mean... I, I, have we got into the Hollywood part of things with, with actors? We haven't got to actors yet, but I'm in the process of filming a little reality TV show. So I'm well on my way there. I just have to move a couple hours north. <laughs> it's called Los Angeles. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Well, Hollywood, here you come. I wish you all the best on this. Thank you. We'll bring you on for an episode. Obviously. I would be so delighted. <laughs> oh, Cal will be there for you. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about inspiration. Yes. Who are, if you're able to, or what has inspired you in your life to become the woman you've become? You know, that's a great question. So I would say my parents are definitely very successful business operators. My mom is the CEO of KPBS, a public media station I'm sure we've all heard of. 
(laughs) And then my dad is a serial entrepreneur and runs quite a few successful businesses in the area, owns a golf cart dealership and provides a lot of golf carts throughout the total United States and even out of country now. And he owns an email networking and marketing business. So I come from, you know, a background of successful business operators, you know, obviously my mom's not the owner of KPBS, but she started there as an unpaid intern. She worked in journalism and news, you know, through college. And I watched her, you know, work as manager and then to become the CEO of this organization. Like I realized what a big deal that is. And so these, they've helped me out. They've, they're always been there for me, but the truth is like, I've never really gotten like a freebie from them as far as like connections, you know, things like that. So it's been really cool because they've set the boundary with that very intentionally to let me grow, you know, in my own pace and let me grow in my own career. So it's been really great to watch them, to learn from them. They're always there to answer questions or consult with me when I have questions, but Besides them, there's some coaches online. There's a woman named Amanda Francis, who is an amazing money coach. And a lot of the work I do, I teach people about their mindset with money and people's fear to like raise their prices or fear to put more offers out or how they put the offers out. Is this, is this a part of Meeting the Rises? One of the things that they offer? It definitely comes with the consulting work that we do. And then we also have a monthly membership, the intention setting membership, where we come and meet every first of the month at 10 a.m. This membership's been going on for like three plus years since like by the pandemic. And we set our intentions for our accountability we want to be held for, for our financial goals for the month. So it's like how many consult calls you want to have, how many clients, how much money you want to save, how many extra surprise checks you want to get in the mail. And we do a meditation to really call that in. And it's a very amazing membership group. One question for you. When is your book coming out? My book? Well, now that I started the publishing company, I can self-publish it successfully. (laughs) I I think, I think this a moment here on your timeline. Mm Mm-hmm. You need to write a book about what you do and how you inspired and what you could give to other people. Because Thank you. Have to, no, you're welcome. I'm, I'm very serious about this. One of the things here on the Ricardo Del California show that I like to do is not only show cap- showcase people's talents and passions, but to encourage you to continue to explore and grow for yourself. Because what you're doing is such a service to the community and media on the arise, do we have clients only in, in, in Southern California or do we happen to have people out, out, you know, in the broader U.S. or abroad? We've worked broader U.S. and abroad. We're okay. international. Okay. What, what, what some other countries are you uh, connected with that you've worked, worked with? One of our clients is in Sweden at the moment. I've done some work over in Costa Rica. It's one of my favorite places in the world. So never mad about working there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see who else. We've worked with clients in Hawaii. Well, it's still United States, but Hawaii, Puerto Rico area. And we've done some partnership as well in Indonesia, Bali area. Okay, we're it's it's the international media on the rise. So this is this is good stuff. I'm I'm excited to to see this. So in, this has been a uh, a true pleasure to to meet today and to talk about what you're doing, about your passions, where you're going. One of the things that I want to ask, if you could say something to somebody right now who might be watching this show or watches it years to come, right? Mm -hmm. has an idea they have a business they have a passion they want to create something and they want to promote it but yet they're struggling with self-doubt and they're like i don't know if i should take this leap how do you help them get past that what i would recommend and what i did and it seemed to work out pretty well is start doing it for free like A lot of people think they need to be paid like a million dollars to do something they've never done before. And I think it's hilarious because look around you at your friends, at your community or family. Someone's probably has a business out there, you know, that doesn't have the best social media. So go in, you know, figure out how to make a design. Like that's what you want to do. Figure out how to make a little video. Number one, start start a logo or concept one, two, start a logo. And then three, you know, yeah, what's the third? 
And so just offer the solution, you know, that doesn't mean you have to post it. That doesn't mean you have to take a real risk yet, but just kind of create a mood board and create something you can turn over to your friend and see if that would be something they want to work with you on and do a little test drive. And so experimentation is always the best way to learn. It's the best way to go, in my opinion. And I've had a lot of success and learned a lot of things the hard way from experimentation. So I'm always a go for it. It's very interesting. I, I was I recently saw an interview with Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. on Minutes, and the interviewer was talking to him, and he is a wildly passionate guy about a lot of different things and a lot of interesting proclivities. It was interesting because he had like this like black crow from Africa and this geodome, and he's just a very like expressionate guy, right? He's an actor's actor, and and one of the things the interviewer said to him, she says, "My impression of you is you're a guy that's." That's all in it all the time and you're all in it. And that's what I see about you. You have such a drive and passion. I am so excited about this company. I knew about a few things about Media the Right. I did not know again about how that you can influence people and encourage them and hold them accountable, which most agencies will not do. They're going to plug and play. One more thing I'd like to, to talk about before we wrap up today. Yes. Is you also have a podcast. Tell us what that is about. And what is the name of the podcast? So the podcast is named Outcome Mastery. And it's all about, it's also OM for like OM. And it's all about people who have mastered an outcome in their life. So I bring people on, whether it's about their business, something in their health, their personal life, an incredible story. It's really just an amazing conversation. They run about like 20 to 40, maybe 60-ish minutes. But they're pretty short and sweet, easy to listen to. And I bring on some incredible people who teach and talk about incredible topics of, I mean, there's really no limit. So whether you want to be inspired business-wise, health-wise, wellness-wise, holistic wise there's something on there for everyone well that is incredible so maybe one of our viewers may want to contact you and how what the name of your website is media on the rise right dot com Yes, mediaontherise.com. There's always a 15-minute link there where you can book a call directly with me. And I love talking to people, no expectation call, whether you want to be on the podcast, chat more, just kind of tell me in the notes and let's chat. Or you can email me at hello at mediaontherise.com. Okay. So if you have a passion, ladies and gentlemen, you want to be on a podcast, you can also contact Mad Maddie. Well, thanks again, Maddie, for being on the show. It's such a pleasure. And if you like the show, ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe, and we'll see you real soon. Thanks again for watching the Ricardo Del California show. If you like what you saw today, please subscribe, and I'll see you real soon.